Hi all, I'm Jere Lechten from Alt University. In this video, I will introduce you the concept of milieu in project business and demonstrate how to perform a milieu analysis. What's the catch? Well, after this video, you're able to describe what, what milieus are and explain the milieu analysis process. Milieu analysis is a very useful tool to enter new project business areas. So, Milieu is a network of business and non-business actors in a clearly defined geographical area attached to a specific activity. For example, the construction of business premises in Silicon Valley for high-tech firms can be considered as such activity in a specific geographical location. The milieu's representation is always constructed and shared by its actors. In this case, the actors in Silicon Valley shared the idea that there is this geographically, geographically situated entity gathering all business and non-business actors and conditioning the setting up of high-tech companies in Silicon Valley. The actors develop this shared representation through relationships, with some of these actors and through ongoing learning process enriched with each new business premise that they develop. A milieu has clearly defined boundaries, but actors may have relationships outside the borders. Like the firms and other actors in Silicon Valley often do have relationships globally, but they also have cooperation with each other, with each other in the same milieu. Well, how does milieu differ from a market? Well, if we look at this from the marketing perspective of a construction company, the market would be all the high-tech firms looking for business premises in Silicon Valley. This means the demand would be global and very hard to anticipate, especially since novel high-tech firms may emerge out of the blue. Practically, a construction firm in the area would require a global scanning system for projects, but even that would not be enough. The reason is that we have to consider the construction of business premises as private investments that escape the advertisement rules of public markets. So a new high-tech firm would presumably issue a call for construction and engineering companies that are suppliers of the customer country selected for their reputation and relation of proximity to the buyer. So by the time a construction company would know that there is a high-tech firm planning to move into Silicon Valley, the deal would have been already won by another company. Right, so now that we have a clear understanding of what milieus are, let's focus on how to analyze them and how to enter into a milieu as an actor to conduct economic activities. The milieu analysis consists of the following main steps. First, we define the milieu. We gather information, we use information, then we interview key experts, other experts, map the milieu, represent the milieu, use the representation, and finally, update the representation. The milieu is linked to a market targeted by the actor who is analyzing the milieu and trying to define it. For instance, from the perspective of a contractor in our Silicon Valley case, the milieu would be the construction of business premises for high-tech firms in Silicon Valley. At this point, the milieu is still hypothetical, so it is possible to modify the definition if it seems too wide or too narrow in terms of geographical area or the activity. After defining the milieu, an actor needs to gather information about it to verify its existence and borders. This can be done by searching for articles and documents dealing with the activity and or area. For instance, in our Silicon Valley case, looking for articles from the internet about the construction of new business premises in Silicon Valley or about new high-tech companies who are moving to Silicon Valley or who have already moved to Silicon Valley. Other information sources can be useful such as the press, a local agent, uh, local sales force situated in the same territory but focused on other activities. It's also good to consider institutional actors such as administration, municipality, and their relationship to the milieu. Next, the use of information. The gathered information is organized at two different levels. At the first level, a synthesis is prepared concerning the milieu's actors that act in and around it. Also, a list of experts writing and communicating on the milieu and so forth. So this is a synthesis of the preliminary data. In our case, that would include the other high-tech companies, contractors, institutional actors, and so forth. 
At the second level, an index is prepared separately for the experts and actors in the milieu. The index for experts is the key to good milieu analysis as it allows the actor to swiftly gain access to information. The reason is that it's often easy to find a suitable expert that knows the milieu well. The expert is used to understand and map the milieu and ultimately to form the first representation of the milieu. Once suitable ex experts have been identified from the index, it is time to contact those and arrange interviews and meetings. Typically, journalists and experts from public research centers and universities are suitable experts because they're often neutral and transparent as they have no vested interest themselves, but they can have, so don't be fooled. In our case, there are many research institutes in Silicon Valley which could be suitable. In the interview, a semi-structured survey or interview is often used to gather information. Semi-structured means that the interview has a structure with open-ended questions and room for the interviewee's voice and interpretation that can lead to different topics than originally planned in the questions. The objective of this step is to gather multiple interviews to acquire different expert opinions and perspectives in order to map the milieu as richly as possible. Next, it is time to contact other experts such as commercial consultants from the index and arrange similar meetings and interviews. Remember that an expert's opinion and representation of the milieu is not an objective truth, although one could consider it as such. Nevertheless, an expert's map is socially constructed and subjective. So it is critical to acquire many expert interviews to map the shared similarities from these socially constructed maps to form the shared milieu that all actors agree on. What about the index of actors? Is it of any use at this point? Well, it is far more difficult to get access to other actors in the milieu and make them, make them to talk about the milieu. The other actors might also consider this as a weak signal and desperate cry for help, meaning that it might close doors to enter into the milieu. So, interviewing experts is a safer choice and doesn't affect the milieu and entering in the same way. After gathering sufficient amount of data from experts, it is time to map the milieu. The idea in the mapping is to mark the number and nature of relationships among actors in the milieu. This is often done by means of an actor slash actor matrix representation at first. There are many, many ways to quantify the relationships. For instance, on the left, you can see a simple binary telling whether there exists a relationship between two actors or not. This matrix here is asymmetrical, meaning that is, it is assumed that the actors can perceive the existence of relationship differently. We could also use some sort of intensity scale from weak to strong, including the exchange and status of relationship. For instance, on the right matrix, you can see such representation with symmetrical form. In a symmetrical form, it is assumed that the actors in a relationship perceive the relationship the same way. This matrix is the first step to classify actors and understand how they're linked to each other, who are the key players in the territory, and so forth. Finally, it is time to represent the milieu. This is done with a graphical representation, such as you can see on the slide now. This includes the highest level of information captured in the previous steps. A good milieu representation follows two main principles. It is readable and understandable and exhaustive to allow to define action plans in detail. In general, milieus are represented as ovals. Actors who are in the oval are inside the milieu and influence it. There can also be actors outside the oval that influence the milieu but are not located in it geographically. Actors are drawn according to their role, culture and proximity with a given shape and size, including individuals, groups and organizations. Additionally, the relationships among actors are characterized with arrows and symbols to show the intensity and orientation of the relationships, for instance, whether there is a conflict or cooperation between two actors. Instead of grouping actors in the representation, the single actors should be captured in detail even though some of them are very similar. This is the key to targeted and accurate actions. 
After constructing the representation, it is time to put it in use. At this point, it is also possible to validate it with the experts that were originally interviewed. Using the representation should help to design direct and indirect ways to reach central actors to enter the milieu. These are often plans that seek to build relationships and they thus take a lot of time to implement and succeed. That's why it is often the case that an actor have a position in a given milieu even before it starts to generate economic activities. At this point, two measures can be very useful to derive plans. The degree of centrality of actors within the milieu and the degree of accessibility to actors by the company. Using these two measures, using these two measure, a two by two matrix can be drawn that helps to define action plans. Actors who have high degree of centrality and low accessibility are allies and potential partners. These are the actors on whom to base the approach to anticipate the existence of projects in the given milieu. The target of the action plans here is to transform these into a pole of continuity. In turn, actors who have a high degree of centrality and accessibility have a key role in the milieu, but they're hard to reach. Hence, indirect approach through other actors is the way to go. Actors with low degree of centrality and low degree of accessibility are minor actors that are easy to contact. These are suitable actors that can be used to get into touch with the actors who had a key role but were hard to be in touch with. Lastly, actors with low degree of centrality but high degree of accessibility are not that important and resources should not be wasted on chasing them. The last step of milieu analysis is to remember update the representation regularly. In other words, the milieu evolves due to new events, new information, which requires updating. Especially when the actor itself manages to enter the milieu and establish a position, it might need a completely new set of information, assumptions and action plans. All right, now we have an understanding of the milieu analysis as a potential entrant. What about if we are already in the milieu and we want to execute the analysis. Well, the process is relatively same with some differences. The main difference would be that instead of relying on expert index and interviews outside your company, we could interview internal experts and use our allies and existing customers in the milieu. However, the use of an external opinion is always worthwhile to avoid biases from your own team and allies. Rest assured, the process would follow rather similarly and you can read more about it from the reading material. All right, to finalize this video, I have prepared a question for your consideration. How does a milieu differ from a project network and how does it differ from a stakeholder map? Okay, that's all. I have finally listed some further readings here for you to learn more about milieus in project business. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.